There's two EVs. That, that one's charging up on a regular magnet charger, and this one is charging up on a uh, on the right off the uh, solar system uh, through this cord. Uh, it's, it's kind of funny, you know. Some people can't get EVs at all, and we happen to have two of them. It's really unfair. Uh, we'd really, really like to see more of them going to production. Everybody able to get one. Today we're going to go look at the uh, solar tour of uh, Long Beach Professional Solar Tour of large installations. It's like a group. Uh, enough to hurt. Well, these guys in the green shirts, are you all from Sharp? Yes, we is. <laughs> the Sharp's really sent a big delegation. At this time, the the this system was put in. It cost about twelve dollars a watt. It's what's called by the Department of Water and Power of Los Angeles an installed system and you'll notice that these were put on here as sort of a public relations thing and they're sort of in the shade in the morning uh, they're they're good in the afternoon but there's other panels on the other side of the building so probably they should have put these panels on the roof and oriented them so they get a larger percentage of actual performance and, uh, and so right now we're, we're striving to get toward a 50 percent as far as right now we're in the 40 but that result is Cardboard, beverage containers, pallets, carpet, you know, basically everything that we can either reuse or recycle. Uh, you know, we have all these diverse so, uh, so again, I just wanted to... Have you had any problems with the inverters since it's been installed? Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, the person who was supposed to be credited to the other gas resistors and all these three networks. Did you do anything with those? I wish I knew the answer to that. I... Uh, well, not that, that I'm uh, aware of, or, or smog, I mean, like, it, so, uh, emissions, uh, that type of thing? No, no, it, it, regrettably, L.A. may lead the country in smog. Oh, okay. And you may know more about how they cope with smog than other places, so you might have something to teach us about both how it affects your systems and how to cope with that. Ah, oh, okay. I, I do know. Uh, tell, me, tell us how large this system is. Uh, 243 kW. Uh, yeah, combined. This one here is 125 uh, DC and 81 kilowatt AC output, so it's about a 65% overall conversion. And that one is uh, 250 DC and 162 kilowatt AC. Uh, do you, you, do you have to know the total cost? Uh, I do not know. Okay. Um, uh, thank you very much. This is the first stop on the solar tour uh, for the IBW and for the Long Beach Convention Center. And as you see, these panels, there's a lot of panels here. This is a 200, over 200 kilowatt system. Uh, it's optimized, these panels are optimized for southwest exposure. The panels on the other side of the building don't get this kind of optimization. Ironically, Los Angeles Department of Water and Power that installed this system does not pay extra for time of use, uh, you know, for peak period power. However, uh, they're, they're, used, they're going to be implementing that as well as tiered rates. And you'll see that these panels uh, could be cleaned off. They haven't really been cleaned yet. Uh, the power that's uh, produced by these goes directly to DWP uh, since the system is actually owned by DWP. DWP rents the roof space. Every place you see a sunny piece of ground, that is a potential revenue generator. Caltrans, Department of Transportation. Good morning, all of you. And these are the panels uh, that they use. What, what we've done... First of all, welcome. You're, you're the second wave, right? Yes. <laughs> um, this is not the module that was used on the, on the Caltrans building. This is an example, kind of in contrast. This is a low density cell population. In fact, the Caltrans module is two, two foot by five foot, high density, uh, using sharp five inch cells, and 109 watts, nominal. There are uh, 897 of these on that facade and the goal from the architect was solar shading to prevent gain into the building. This is a glass glass module, think of a grilled cheese sandwich. It's structurally, it's heavy, much heavier than a standard module. It's designed to work well in, in this kind of a, a situation. It's designed to work in a seismic uh, area. These were attached to steel uh, support uh, members that are actually connected right into the curtain wall of the building um, for, to deal with high wind loads. It's an RTV uh, contact mount 
th these are non-framed modules. Um, the architect wanted a low-profile junction box uh, and specified a metal one, which we weren't very happy about because we ended up getting some, some faults when the system was installed and we had to, our staff hanging from swing stages had to go back in and repair all those faults. I guess some part of everybody coming through here was the agreement we we're going to get some cleaning done on these. On these. Uh, one of the challenges here is the kind of sticky do in an urban environment from automotive and everything else with a lot of construction, you get dust on there and as we know that's 7 to 10 percent uh, decline in efficiency. The inverters. The inverters are stuck in a plenum, in a series of plenums, which go figure. So that, that was designed. What kind of inverters? Pardon? What kind? SMA. SMA Sunny Boys. What size? Fives or threes? Or three. Three. How many of them? Thirty. Thirty, and they're all encapsulated. Yes. So this is the Department of Transportation building. It's a beautiful solar array. The panels also serve as a shading for passive cooling. And the problem is, this is a perfect illustration of the difficulty of the California Solar Initiative. Caltrans did this project about four years ago when the rebate was about $2.50 a watt. At this time, it would be almost impossible to do a system like this if you followed the California Solar Initiative because you'd have to do a Pathfinder study at all four corners of every subarray. And each one of those little shady things, those little awnings, is a subarray. So you'd have to go up there and do a Pathfinder study. Then you'd have to measure the angle and inclination um, of every single subarray. And you'd have to do it on those vertical ones and the horizontal ones, et cetera, et cetera. This whole system is only 100 kilowatts rated with 30 Sunny Boy 3K uh, inverters. So it's, it's probably underperforming uh, the amount of money that they use, not, not even counting the fact that they use encapsulated uh, solar uh, cells in, in double paint, uh, uh, armored, armored plated glass, essentially. But it is a beautiful system and noteworthy and a beautiful illustration of why the California Solar Initiative could not be used on systems like this and how the difficulty that it would entail. Imagine doing paperwork on every single one of those subarrays, a shading analysis, as well as a pathfinder study with four photographs. 